I was no longer frustrated that he had cheated. I was now so frustrated that he was insulting my intelligence. It's, it's as if I'm crazy because I must have been crazy and listened to my then fiance have intercourse with another woman in his vehicle. Still deny it. As Shaggy would have said, it wasn't me. This was Yamhead moment number two for me. Do you realize that most men think going to the hairdresser is where women go to gossip? I don't know if that's the case at any other hairdressers, but it's certainly not the case at mine. But I do have an experience that I want to share with you and guess what? My nails are in really bad condition. So I'm gonna be polishing my nails and giving myself a little, what I call a dry manicure while I'm talking to you about what men think we actually go to the salon to do. That said, let's jump into it. So what am I using today? I'm using my manicure kit. This kit is actually sold on Goffa for only $10. There's actually nothing that you'll ever need to do your nails that's not in this kit. And it's in this very nice leather case that pins down so it becomes a travel kit and it's only $10. We're also gonna be using nail polish to remove the color on my nail. I should say nail polish remover as well as the polish system that I use, which is it's OPI Infinite Shine. Why do I use this? I don't use gel on my nails because I realize it hurts my nails over time and I never use acrylic or tips or anything of that sort. But I do a lot of heavy things around the house and I want to keep my nail polish on for two weeks. So this system, allows me to keep my polish on for two weeks without the lighting and the gel process that most of us are familiar with. When I initially moved to Kingston, well, I don't feel I've, I live in Kingston. So let me say, started to spend more time in Kingston. I decided to check out a hair salon and I went to that salon and the first time I went, it was such a great experience and I would go back every week or every other week. I started to interact with the owner because initially one of the ladies there who worked in the salon would do my hair and nails and I was very happy with them. Uh, the owner started to style me and she also started to gossip. She asked me where I'm from. I told her Montego Bay. I told her that in Mobe, I had my hairstylist there and I'd been going there for many, many years. And in Kingston, I tried her and I tried somebody else. And immediately, just like that, she went on to tell me how the other person was a clutch, clutch, clutcher. I had no idea what that meant back then. But I said, what is that? Because I thought it was it meant that if I go there with my purse and so on, that the person would steal out of my bag. That's the first thing that crossed my mind, right? So I was curious and that was wrong for me to ask her to explain because I think it gave her permission and she went on to say that she's a shoplifter and she was you know, deported from overseas because of it. And it was just a mess. And I listened, I didn't know her well enough, but when she was done with my hair, because this is the thing, don't face it with the hairdresser, when they have hot iron in your hair. So when she was done with the process, and I'm just here removing, so not doing anything, you're not missing anything. So when she was done with my hair, I said to her, I said, listen, one of the reasons why I enjoyed coming here is because I get to relax and I feel it's a positive space. I said, this experience that I just had was not positive at all. And I never went back. And <laughs> I actually started to go to the person she was talking so negatively about because I, I just didn't feel it was right. And that was kind of my way of saying, you know what? These gossipers, 
I'm not gonna support her, but not only am I not gonna support her, I'm gonna start going to the person who she was so negative towards. And I started to go to that salon. And needless to say, my experience for the most part, because of my attitude, has never been gossiping in a salon. Progressive thinking, yes. Talking about goals, yes. Talking about being better than our yesterday self, yes. Learning from other people who are there, their experiences. Talking about what's going on in the news, current affairs, yes. But, you know, gossiping is just negativity. And when you live your life or you install yourself or you obsess over negativity, it follows you. You can't escape it. So now we have taken the re remover or remove the nail polish. So guess what we're going to talk about today? Something that men actually think we go to the hairdressers to talk about, which is them. So today I'm going to be talking about five relationship mistakes that we make all the time. And then I'm going to tell you five of my top relationship mistakes, because listen, I have made a lot. But we're gonna keep it short because we don't want this video to go on forever. So let me start with the five mistakes that many of us make. So now that the polish has been removed from my nails, I'm gonna clip them down a bit because they're a little bit out of shape for the most part. So let me clip them down and then I'm gonna use the nail file that's in the kit again to just square the edges and then I don't use buff or what you call them or that thing that you use to smooth off your nails. Do you notice that when you're using it, it's eroding your actual nails? It's actually making it thinner. So there's no reason to use it. I don't use it. And if I even get my nails done professionally, I'll ask them not to buff it or to use that filing tool that thins out my nails over time. So let me get them in shape while I talk to you. So mistake number one is that as women, we tend to forgive infidelity repeatedly. Oh my God, this is one mistake I made. It's funny because today I have a no tolerance approach to infidelity, but I didn't start out here, guys. I was one of the most forgiving persons that you could come across in every aspect, right? So I'll use my example to explain why it's a bad idea. So in a relationship that I had, and this relationship was a serious one, just to tell you how serious it was, it resulted in a marriage proposal. When I met the person, they had just ended a relationship that were, they were in, or at least that's what they told me. It was not a surprise that the clothing and some of the items from that past relationship was still at their place when I went there for the first time. But of course, as any woman would do, or self-respecting woman would do, I said to him, can you please arrange for her to either come for, the, for, for her stuff or for you to take it to her, you know, since you're moving on and I wouldn't want them to be here. Anyway, I went back and the clothing and the stuff were still there. So I thought to myself, why is this man keeping these clothing, this clothing here? And again, our gut tells us that something is wrong, you know, ladies, it does. But we oftentimes brush it off and give our partner the benefit of the doubt. Now I'm just filing down the nails here. And that's exactly what I did. I gave him the benefit of the doubt and again, I gave him an ultimatum and I said, I don't want to come back here and see the clothing. Of course, I came back and this time I came back, I can't remember why I was, oh, I was coming back to surprise him and to leave something there so he would come home and see it in the nighttime because I already had a key for the place, right? And when I came back, I saw her there. She wasn't told that they were, not, they were no longer in a relationship. And it wasn't my place to tell her. I just introduced myself to her. I told her it's great to meet her. 
and you know I'll just get out of her hair so she can continue to do what she's doing so I didn't even go in I left that was yam head moment number one there are a few others now after that he eventually separated when I spoke to him about it he made it official her stuff was delivered to her and she you know I guess they separated officially based on what he told me now we moved in together and we were now on the path of fermenting and, and putting things in place because now we were engaged and he was working out of town one day and it got very late so I got worried so what I'm gonna do now guys not to cut but I'm gonna put on the base coat now he was working out of town and I got a little bit concerned when it got to I think it was like 10 p.m. and he didn't come home and that was really unlike him so I started to call to make sure you know he didn't have vehicle issues he was okay because I had learned to trust him again and the phone rang the first time without an answer and the second time the phone actually rang and I heard it answered but nobody was I was there saying hello hello nobody was answering and I sat there for the next few minutes and listened to my then fiance have intercourse with another woman in his vehicle. The conversation that followed, it looks like they were just done based on the timing of my call. She was worried about being pregnant or I don't think she was worried about catching a disease because that wasn't mentioned. It was more about being pregnant and apparently the phone had pocket dialed let me tell you something god has a way of showing us these signs but because we think we're smarter than god sometimes you know what we do we ignore them and we say no man it's just a one time or a two time mistake and i am i'm the prize he won't do anything to hurt me again this is just because you know he's coming from a past of infidelity and you know he was cultured that way and i'm gonna change him because we all think we can change men that's another mistake we made but let's not jump into that one so now i'm done putting on the top coat now we're gonna move on to the actual nail polish it's easter time so it's spring so this is a pastel so we're going spring with the nails anyway he somehow when i kept saying hello hello after i heard the whole thing unraveling he somehow realized that his phone was pocket dialed or answered pocket answered i should say and then he picked up and nothing was said the phone was just disconnected and i thought to myself i will never forgive him for this but i sat on the veranda and by the way i tell this story in much more details in my book no regrets just lessons and i sat on the veranda and i never forget i was wearing fire engine red nail polish and i was there sitting you know paddling over with my nails just so anxious to attack him when he got home and when he got home I said, what's going on? You know, this, this is the second time. Uh, it's not gonna work. And you know what? The man did the worst thing that he could have ever done to me, which is he insulted my intelligence. He told me that I didn't hear anything. I was just imagining things. And I, I you know, he would never do that to me. And none of that happened. And let me tell you, I was no longer frustrated that he had cheated. I was now so frustrated that he was insulting my intelligence. It's, it's as if I'm crazy because I must have been crazy for me to imagine up all this and then accuse him of it. And even when I showed him that the call wasn't answered by him, but it was answered and I was on the call for several minutes, still deny it. As Shaggy would have said, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. 
and this was yam head moment number two for me and guys i use q-tips like when i mess up on the edges you know a lot of the nail techs use this stick here and they wrap some cotton on the edge i'm not that complex i just dip the q-tip into some remover and now i have remover on the end of the q-tip and i just use it to clean up the sides like that if it messes it up i just think it's simpler so now we're moving on to the first coat on the other hand we're making fast progress i need to get through these points fast anyway that was my yam head moment number two because i ended up staying with this man now yam head moment number three was it guys i mean <laughs> the first time you can say it's a mistake after the third time it's a habit it's no longer a mistake so we were living together again and i suspected that he was doing something wrong when i was at, in bed at night he would be on the computer downstairs and again i write about this in more details in my book if you want the the grave details and i decided because i've i've worked in technology all my life so i decided to install spyware on his computer it's very easy to do guys and i installed the spyware it was actually on the home computer and needless to say within days the spyware had delivered and i had seen where on back then it was what was it called again high five it's that long ago it was high five and i saw where he was exchanging inappropriate messages with different females all over the place and that worried me because this wasn't a man who wanted to have a relationship on the side with one woman which is not good but it's definitely safer than having mul multiple relationships with multiple women which is exactly the behavior he was exhibiting so when i realized that that was the case i said no odetta this this yamhead business just cannot continue this stupidity of yours it needs to end and uh, you know i showed him what i'd found the the nice thing about spyware is you get all the passwords and everything so i invaded his privacy and yes i know now that that was wrong and i've learned my lessons from it because if you get to the point where you have to be invading your spouse's privacy because of lack of trust you probably shouldn't be with that spouse but anyway back then i wasn't as learned or as mature as i am today so yeah i did invade his privacy and i you know i spoke to him about it and he couldn't deny it because the evidence was there but he asked me to forgive him and i said nope i said you have what i think i said you have six months to completely turn things around or else that was it but that i said that because one I didn't want to just come out and tell him that I'm leaving and no he's not a violent person actually he's a very good human being he was just not the man for me so I wasn't worried about him being violent towards me but I didn't want him to try to convince me to stay so I said you have I think it was three or six months but I knew that it would take that amount of time for me to find a new place because most men you tell to leave they very rarely leave so I knew I had to leave and I know it would take that amount of time to find a new place to get furniture, furniture in it. And of course it was me and my son and to make sure that we were comfortable and then to move. And needless to say, I executed on that plan. And within six months, I moved out and moved on. So going back to point number one we need to stop forgiving infidelity and especially repeat infidelity it doesn't it, it doesn't create a positive situation for you it doesn't allow you to grow it doesn't allow you to flourish it will not make you happy it will make you panic you will be accused of many things like you're you know you're overreacting and trust me it's not worth it remember good better best you may think that man is the best thing that has happened to you but i 
promise you in the name of Jesus that better is out there. Now we're gonna put on the second coat because we're done with the first. Let's move on to number two. We refuse to believe, and this is not for everyone, but I can tell you this affected me. We oftentimes refuse to believe that our spouse is with us because of our money. Now, let me talk about it from a male perspective and then a female perspective because that's another mistake that I made. Now, a lot of men out there often end up with women who are very attractive, sometimes also very intelligent. And when you look at these men, and God please forgive me for saying this because you make everybody in your own image so nobody should be called ugly. But let's just say that even their mother would have a hard time looking at them, right? So they're not the cutest thing around. Yet, they're with these women who look like they come off of the cover of a magazine. I also see it, and don't get me wrong, I have friends and people that I know who are with older men or women and they're happy. It's a genuine relationship of love. So this doesn't apply to everyone, but I also see older men with much younger women and they actually convince themselves that the woman is with them because they actually love them and it's not because of their financial status. Now, I can't tell you what to do because it's your life and it's your money and it's your choices, but I can tell you that very rarely are those women with you because of who you are or how good you look because and you can test it out just stop laying money on them or spending on them for a while and watch what happens it's it's, it's not rocket science they're gonna start changing their behavior and soon you will become a part of their past and they will dismiss you so fast you wouldn't begin to believe it. Now, some of them are very invested, so they'll go along with you for the long haul. As a matter of fact, I know someone who, and this is somebody I, I probably could call a colleague because I've known her for many years and I still talk to her because I don't judge guys. I will still have relationships with people that don't always do things that I agree with, but it's who I am. I'm not going to hold it against them, but I know this particular um, person and I can tell you that this is what she does because she only dates men who are wealthy and this is what she does. You see, for the first six months or so, she spends her money on these men. She takes them out to nice places. She buys them gifts. Now remember the man is who has the money, you know, but she just shows them a good time and shows them that, listen, I can pay the bill at dinner as well. I can invite you on a date. As a matter of fact, she even took one of them on a trip overseas. But you know what she's doing? She's planting the seeds. She's planting the seeds and building the trust. When these men who are a little bit hard to look at, when they see this happening, they misinterpret it to mean that she genuinely cares, but it's a strategy, guys. She's very strategic, although it's not right. So I have to counsel her at the same time, but it's a great strategy. What, what can I say? I, I have to appreciate a great strategy even if I don't agree with it and she does this and then the men just pour on to her I can tell you that when she does this within a year they're usually buying her either an apartment or a new car or some big investment because they're sold guys we're done with the second quote and I'm only on point two or five we need to speed this thing up now it's just the top coat, but I'm gonna let this set a little bit. So let's do the fanning thing. Now I do have a fan, but I can't use it because usually what I do is I take this fan or I take this one up here, again, that's sold on Goffo for little or nothing. And I just put it on my nails for probably about three minutes. And then I go and I run it under cold water and I put it for another three minutes and voila, that's it. I can go on and do anything that's active or engaging and my nails won't get smudged. 
going back to what I was saying, you need to, as a man, see things for what it is. Now, as a woman, it happens to us too. I am not wealthy, I'm not rich, I'm still like many of you on that path, which is why I talk so much about financial freedom, but I can help myself. And there was this particular gentleman, and when I first saw him, he stared at me with carnal fascination, no joke. That's exactly how I described it in my book. I have a way of taking on and being in relationship with men that I think I can help. Whether it is that they're in a relationship where their ex-wife or ex-lover was cheating, or I see that they have a lot more ambition than they're capitalizing on, and I feel the need to help them. I have a way of attracting that kind of, that kind of partner to myself, and this was no different. And I knew, you know, just based on his comments sometimes, which were, he didn't realize he was coming across that way, and intuition and the gut feeling, guys, never you deny that gut feeling. I knew that he had ulterior motives. And I thought that, you know, over time, he would appreciate the relationship for what it is and not see it as a means to pro propel himself in life financially because I was helping him in his business. I was helping him not just to manage operations, but also I was putting money into his business. And this is another yamhead moment, but I don't regret any of these guys. Remember, my book is called No Regrets, Just Lessons. For me, they're just things that I learned from. And I saw the signs and then of course his estranged wife because he was separated for quite a few years I believe at this point when we met. And she got into my messenger on Facebook and was telling me that he's not who he said he is, he is very dishonest and I ignored her. You know I said she was a bitter ex and I brushed her off. Listen, when they say, I mean some are really bitter but listen to the underlying message in their tone. Anyway, I was spending time with this woman's children, so I was never gonna disrespect her. So I listened to her and I asked her to trust me as an adult to make the decision that was best for me. She never left out of my, my messenger and she kept coming at me with different things and she said, I'm gonna prove to you that he's not who he said he was. And long story short, again, if you want the details, you have to read the book, Basically, she messaged me one day and said, he just had a CX with me. And this is a man who wasn't with his wife for a few years and had moved on. And, uh, but of course he has children with her. Now I'm putting on the top coat, guys. Of course he has children with her, so he would have to visit her periodically. And she described it in grave details, how he came in, he saw her, and he just couldn't refuse her. And he came in, and of course he didn't know I know, and I said, I got this information about you and he denied it. He tried the shaggy thing, but that wouldn't work the second time around because that was my yamhead moment number two. This was several years in the future. So that didn't work on me again. And I told him that it was over and I moved on. So the point is, and number two is, that there are actually people out there who will be with you because of what they will gain financially or they will take advantage of you. Be very mindful of them. We focus on winning an argument instead of understanding our spouses. Now, many of us are guilty of this one. But what you have to remember, it's not you versus your spouse. You are a unit. You are a partnership. Focus on coming to an amicable solution like you would in any other partnership. This is not just because it's a relationship and it's man and woman business. Treat it like a partnership. Give it the respect it deserves. Manage your conversations accordingly and try to come to a consensus that considers both parties and that will work in the interest of both parties. When you start treating your relationship that way, it's no longer who is right or who is wrong. 
you need to stop doing if you're doing it. This is complaining about your relationship to everyone except your spouse. Guys, needless to say, when you start telling people your business like that, they choose sides. And if you tell your friend that you're having problems with your spouse, soon your friend will start judging your spouse. And a lot of times you tell your friends you have a problem with your spouse and you go back to that spouse and you then expect your friend to still respect your spouse the same way. It's not going to happen. Also, you should always talk, open up communication with your spouse. Talking to your friends and other people about your spouse is a lack of respect and it's an indication that you're not invested in the relationship. And I could say so many more things about all the reasons not to do this, but the bottom line is you are in a partnership. Remember, I don't, I don't even call it a relationship anymore. It's a partnership. If you are in a business partnership and something is going wrong in the business, you don't usually go and complain to your competitors or to everybody in the marketplace. No, you meet with your partner and you try to establish a process to resolve the issue at hand. You need to start treating your relationships like partnerships and you'd be surprised how well they work. The next one is not being yourself in a relationship, not being open and honest with your partner. Now, this one is so obvious. If your partner falls in love, with someone who they don't know obviously when your true character and your true self comes out you can expect anything and this is not just your personality it's also your physical i saw a case in china where this young lady had done a lot of plastic surgery and she looked completely different from what she looked like when she got married and of course she had children and her children looked like her and again she was a little bit hard to look at if you know what i mean so the husband actually sued her for i can't remember the claim i'll put it in the comments when i when it comes to mind but he sued her for basically tricking him into marrying her and producing children that look like who she really was, which isn't who she showed to him. So whether it's physical or it's personality wise, be true to yourself. Try to look like how you look, too much makeup here. And when you strip that off, your husband is wondering how in the world did he end up with a stranger in bed in the morning because you look totally different from the person he went to bed with. You can't afford for that to happen. So be true to yourself from a character perspective as well as from a physical perspective. You need to set boundaries in your relationship and you should never give up those things that mean a lot to you. And I'm gonna use one of my mistakes to help you understand this. In one of my relationships, my spouse had a problem with one of my closest friends. And he had a problem with her because he knew that she knew things about him that I didn't know that could hurt our relationship. But my friends trust my judgment. If I make a decision to be with someone, they're not going to tell me. And by the way, these things were before I met this person. They're not going to come and tell me things from this person's past to hurt the situation that I'm in. And I love my friends for that. But he was afraid that at some point my friend would tell me about his past past deeds and that I would use it to judge him and probably to make decisions. So he started to tell me how my friend was a horrible person and I shouldn't have her around and he didn't want her in his house and I didn't listen but I had to respect the union meaning I stayed friends with her. She didn't come to our home but I remained friends with her despite what he said. Can you imagine if I had made the decision to jeopardize that relationship and then when we split up I'm not only losing a spouse but I've lost a friend that I knew for many years before my spouse. Insecure men will do that to you. They will want to separate you from your family and your friends so that you have to rely on them for everything friendship sometimes money support everything and that way they can control you like a puppet put up borders 
ensure that you're protecting your space continue to do the things you love i remember i was going to the gym i enjoyed kickboxing and this man said why don't you let us work out at home together why don't you let us uh you know walk in our community and again wanting to preserve the relationship i agreed and i did some of those things but i realized after a while that he was trying to take me away from those things that took me out of the house and on one hand i you know i thought it was a good thing but on the other hand i realized he had an ulterior motive so again i gave up a lot of things don't do that maintain your hobbies maintain your relationship especially with your family and your friends because that's what's gonna sustain you when something goes wrong in that relationship that you are in now don't get me wrong if they make a valid point and those people that they're telling you to stay away from are actually toxic you should and the last mistake i want to talk about today that many of us make in our relationships is that we get very lazy about romance and affection in the beginning it's hot and heavy and you're all over each other but as time passes it becomes less of a priority especially if you have children they become the focus your job becomes the focus and no longer are you enjoying each other's company now your spouse is thinking you know this is what it used to be and they want that in their life you may not but they do want that in their life and I'm not saying this is right, but sometimes they look outside to get it. And it's not the mature thing to do because you should really come to your spouse and saying, listen, you know, our romantic life and, you know, our, the, your affection towards me has dwindled and I want to see how we can Im improve it and work on it together. Most people don't do that these days. They go outside and find the affection and the romance elsewhere. So that's it. Today we did a few things. We polished my nails. Take a look and I'll show you them close up. I'll do a photo and pop them up so you can see them. And we also spoke about what a lot of men think we actually do when we're polishing our nails at the salon or getting our hair done, which is to talk about them or to talk about men or gossip but uh, make sure that's not what you are doing at your salon because gossip is toxic and it will pull you in in ways you wouldn't begin to believe until next time my youtube family take care